to our Tampa Home Group video blog. Thanks for joining us again. I'm Maria Hoffman. And I'm John Hoffman. And thanks for joining us. It's our goal here at Tampa Home Group to keep you, our friends and clients, updated on what is going on in the market and how that affects you as buyers and sellers. So we actually have a very exciting topic to talk about today. And, and not a lot of people know this, but our market has shifted. So, um, John, you study the numbers. And you look at what's selling and how the market's changed. How has the market changed from, let's say, three years ago? Three years ago, 80% of everything selling, closing, was a bank owner short sale. Okay. And the sellers of traditional sales, meaning sellers that were not a bank owned or a short sale, were very frustrated that the market was being dictated and pricing being set by these distressed properties. And, and that's why over 85% of traditional listings didn't sell. Those sellers weren't willing to compete with the bank owners or short sales because, quite honestly, they were dictating the price. Today, for example, in zip code 33647, which is all of New Tampa, and Fishhawk Ranch area, also the numbers are identical, properties over $300,000, 90% of those that have sold in 2012 were traditional sales. Really? Real. That's a huge shift, John, right? So bank owns and short sales each made up about 5% of the sales. Only 5% of the market. Only 5% each, which means the, the traditional sales are dictating the market. They're being able to shake off the negative effects of a few bank owned or short sales. So what this means to somebody either buying or selling is that we've absolutely reached the bottom of the market. And while we're not going to have substantial growth, we'll see a little bit of growth, but it's a fabulous, fabulous opportunity. So John, if you think that we've reached the bottom of the market, if I'm a seller, should I just wait to sell my house and, and hope that I can sell it for a lot more in a few years? What do you think? Well, it's a case-by-case -case situation, but keep in mind that interest rates today are under 4%. So if you're a seller and you have a $400,000 house, somebody can purchase that house and pay around $1,400 a month principal and interest, maybe $1,500. If you wait and the interest rates go back up to 7 or 8%, which is a historic low average, and that is coming in the near future, near future being a year or two, that same payment jumps to over $3,200. Wow. So when you want to sell, at the lower interest rates, there's many more buyers that can afford your home. Okay. So if you wait, you might see 1% to 2% annual growth. Really? That's it? No, the, yeah. Not, not a tremendous amount because while the bank owns and short sales have decreased in number significantly, they're still nipping at the heels and they're going to stop the growth from being, you know, 5 to 6 to 7% annually. Plus, with the interest rates being so low, the buyers want to buy. Yeah. And, and so the opportunity for a seller is, it depends on the situation. If you want to upsize and you want to take advantage of today's interest rates, you don't want to be a seller that says, geez, I wish I would have bought that house when the rates were 4% because now they're 7 or 8. Exactly. Exactly. The other opportunity might be, Maria, is to keep your house as an investment property and buy something else. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of options, and the window's wide open. I'm not sure how long the window's going to stay open for. Hmm. Now, John, let me ask you this. You told me that only... 5% of the actual closings this year have been short sales, and yet it seems like there are a large number of short sales on the market. What, what does that tell us about the short sales? Well, right now, and it's mostly because of the second mortgages are digging their heels in and mm -hmm. wanting more money, only about 35% of short sales that go pending actually close. Yeah. So there's a greater likelihood that the house you want to buy is a short sale, mm -hmm. and there's not that many of them, will never close. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, John. You know, I'm out there working with buyers every day, and I can share with you, uh, we've closed a large number of uh, short sale purchases this year, but we've also had uh, a number of fallout due to second mortgages, due to sellers' non-cooperation, and just due to unforeseen circumstances. So uh, I think those numbers make sense to me from being in the market. Well, and the other problem is facing short, short sales in the near future, the law that allows the short sale deficiency amount from a seller to be tax-free, in other words, not treated as income by the IRS, mm -hmm. that expires at the end of 2012. 
There's no talk in Washington to extend it. So now when people are faced with short selling, you maybe have a $100,000, dollars $300,000 short sale, that money will get put on the following year's taxes as income. Wow. Wow. Well, John, thanks so much for this. This is great information. We know, what can our audience take away from this conversation? That we've reached the bottom, that the short sales and bank, bank owns do not dictate price anymore. The traditional sales do. And, and, and that the market is going to move in the right direction and with interest rates at historic lows at under 4%, if you're thinking of doing something, you don't think about it, do something about it. Because, again, you don't want to be one of these buyers or sellers in two years when the rates are 8% saying, gosh, I wish I would have taken advantage of those historic lows back in 2012. Wonderful. Thanks. So if you'd like some help or if you're thinking of possibly selling or buying, give us a call here at the office, 813-907-2555. And until next time, have a great day. Have a great day.